Well, good morning. <laughs> good to have you in God's house, and good to have you with us if you're on Facebook this morning, and we welcome you to the service as well. Where I live, I can hear when there's a football game or a baseball game or whatever kind of athletic events going on at, at Marshall Academy. I can hear it. <laughs> I can save money on a ticket because I can get a lawn chair and set out in my backyard and I can tell you when Marshall does something good. <laughs> uh, I can tell you when the referee does something bad, too. But I know when there's something good happening for the home team because the whole community knows it. And this morning, something wonderful is happening for the home team. <laughs> And I want this community to hear it when these young people get, get baptized. Amen? Amen? And so, let it rip when it's time. Go for it, folks. I mean, cheer and don't hesitate. Uh, pretend you're not in a Baptist church. Okay, let's do that this morning. Caroline Johnson came. We spoke to her, and mom and dad spoke to her, and there was just clear clarification that she had accepted Jesus as her Savior. So Caroline comes this morning. Caroline, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Caroline Johnson, upon your and in obedience to my Lord's command, I baptize you, my little sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I always like it when somebody comes and says, I've asked Jesus into my heart and my life. And they clarify that several times as Case was adamant that he has prayed and asked Jesus to come into his heart and his life. And so, Case Moore, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Case, upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and in obedience to my Lord's command, I baptize you my little brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. All God's people say, yeah. I would tell you to settle down, but don't settle down, okay? Let's keep it going. Larry, you come to lead us, man. An experience that only a parent can wonderful as we get together for worship this morning we're going to come into his presence so let's all stand and sing that together please come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart your voice is raised your voice is raised give glory and honor and power unto him jesus the name above all I don't think I have to say good morning because that was amazing. What an amazing way to start off Sunday morning, am I right? That was great. So let's give it up for that. <laughs> Fun story real quick. I was told to keep it short and sweet, so I'll just say this. One of the very first times that Case ever said anything to me was uh, square up. And uh, 
every time I see him now, we have to, uh, he has to fight me. So I'm looking forward to fighting him after church. So, uh, but it's good to see everybody here this morning. I'm uh, especially thankful this morning. I was telling Lexi on the way here that uh, something just uh, made me feel last night that I needed to, uh, I felt like I should do more, that I could do more. And so uh, with that being said, I know that I say this every Sunday, but I love you. I'm thankful for you, and I wouldn't be able to do my ministry without you. And actually, I probably wouldn't be able to do life without you. And yes, I have told Lexi that I love her this morning, too, because somebody asked her that the other day. And I do. I love every one of you, and I'm super thankful for you. Uh, Facebook, I also love you. I'm super I'm super thankful for you. I didn't get to see how many had, uh, had looked uh, or watched us live last week. But uh, in case you haven't noticed or haven't been on Facebook or you don't have Facebook because uh, I barely get on there, can I have it? But get on Facebook, go check out our live, uh, invite your friends, share. So Facebook, hit that share button. But it is, it's been an amazing tool that we've been able to use. And there are uh, a, a bunch of people, hundreds of people actually, that are getting to hear the word of God. So let's welcome Facebook this morning. So I only have one announcement. And that is that we have Wednesday nights, and I think everyone's starting to kind of gather that if you come over there and uh, you're hurdling a small child running through the lobby or uh, dodging a dodgeball or a hula hoop or a pool noodle or whatever it may be. But if you haven't been over there, you need to come over there, and uh, I will have the drink machine refilled this week. Uh, yeah, I got Billy Mac got on to me for that. Um, not really, but it <laughs> They're holding me accountable because I keep forgetting to fill, refill the vending machines. But um, y'all, you, you really need to come. It is so much fun over there. The kids have a blast. The youth have, have a blast. And so uh, just uh, be prayerful for, prayerful for our uh, Wednesday nights uh, so that we can continue to grow and continue to grow in the Lord as well. And uh, it starts at kids eat at 5, youth at 530, and then the youth have a lesson at 6. We are going through... Uh, a series called Simple Studies of Scripture where we are just going through the entire, basically the Bible, just an overview of every book of the Bible. And so it's really interesting. Or you even know any kids, just invite them to church so that we can, uh, we can start sharing the Word of God and just some love to them. So we're going to pray this morning. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for this day, this day Lord. Thank you for, for your Word. Thank you for your, your, your love and your mercy and your grace, God. Uh, Lord, but most importantly, we thank you for, for Jesus. God, we thank you for Jesus' life on this earth, Lord, his, his perfection that he lived out for us, God, because we couldn't do it, Lord. He came and he lived perfect and he died a criminal's death, Lord, and, and his blood washes away our sins, Lord, and we're thankful for that. We're thankful that we have a, we, we're able to have a relationship with him so that we can have a relationship with you. God, we're thankful that, that you, you have given us an amazing Sunday, Lord. Bless us with an amazing Sunday morning, God, with these baptisms, God. Lord, we thank you for, for being here, God, and, and allowing us to have a safe place so that we can worship you, that we can praise you. But God, right now, there's someone in, in the audience, Lord, there's someone in our congregation that doesn't know Jesus. And maybe they don't even know what, what this baptism was for, Lord, and they don't know what is happening, Lord, but Lord, I pray that, that they know before this day is over that Jesus died for them. That he died for their salvations. That, that if they just freely accept that grace, that they can have a home in heaven with you. Lord, I pray that, that if someone in here is struggling, that they would just uh, feel your love and mercy and grace. Lord, we're thankful for this day, Lord, and we're thankful for everything that you bless us with. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Last night, uh, I met with some old friends of mine up on the square, and we had our 50-year class reunion. Uh, 1972, we got together, and uh, there were a bunch of old folks there. But and I went too, so uh, it was it was it was great. That was good to it's good to it's good to get together with all those people. We're going to stand and we're going to sing together all these songs you know, so let's all stand and sing together. The first one is How Great Is Our God. The 
splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me how great. Our God, and always seeing how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hand, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great. Our God, name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Name our God, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and now we'll sing how great, how great is our God. To God be the glory. the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice, oh come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done, oh perfect redemption. The purchase of believer, the promise of God, the flawless offender who truly be believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receive. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our victory, when Jesus we see.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. And give him the glory, great things he has done. Great These two were laughing, so they knew I was flat. That's, that's, <laughs> Thou art worthy. Ready? have a special, at least I have a special privilege, well maybe I don't, <laughs> we love Operation Christmas Child at First Baptist Church, uh, every church that I've served that's been one of the highlights, you know it's Christmas season when you start packing that little shoe box with, with gifts. And I'm gonna let Donna, all red. Donna, you come up and introduce uh, our special guest, has a presentation to make this morning. He told me to do the introductions because I know who she is. He just really didn't want me to get, shut up. Laura Freeman is our logistics coordinator for the Northwest Mississippi area team, which I am a member of. I am the drop-off coordinator uh, during National Collection Week, and you all are very faithful and very committed to helping me with that. It's a team effort. There's no way I could do it by myself. Um, Laura is here to recognize the church for its commitment to Operation Christmas Child and its mission over the last five years. So come on up. Like Donna said, my name is Laura Freeman, and I'm the Logistics Coordinator for Operation Christmas Child, and I'm so excited to be here. It's a good morning. Two baptisms, two children, that's what I'm in the business for. So um, I just want to say, I would like to refresh your memory. If you don't pack shoe boxes, or if you do, I just want to tell you a little bit about it. I learned some stories. I want to get my notes out. Um, 
Operation Christmas Child is not only a little box filled with goodies. It's about saving souls, and I get so teary about it. But um, when the children get the box, they get the toys, and they're all excited, but they also get a little booklet. Let me find it. It's called The Greatest Gift, and we all know what The Greatest Gift is. And it's in their language. It's not in the English language unless they speak English. And it's the Bible stories of Jesus, all in the little booklet, and it tells the plan of salvation. A lot of children give their hearts to Jesus on the shoebox day, but some don't. So there's another, they're invited to the greatest journey. And it's a 12-week class that a lot of the children go to, and then they give their hearts to Jesus. They're Since 2009, there have been 30 million children go to the greatest greatest journey. And of those, 14.9 million have given their hearts to Jesus. So, yes. It's a great ministry. And we, um, I learned this this week. The name is uh, Namibia, I think that's the name of it. And it has no written language. So this little book right here here wouldn't do them any good because there's no written language for them. So Operation Christmas Child made it possible to send MP3 players to each child so that they could hear the word. They recorded the Gospel of John and sent the MP3 players, and that was four years ago. And since that happened, 58 churches have been planted. So you are doing a great work. You're doing a great work if you pack a shoebox. If you help Donna with the drop-off location, packing a shoebox and doing that is like being a missionary and staying home to do it. So if you don't pack shoeboxes, I would encourage you to do it. Um, But with no further ado, I would like to recognize your church for being the church and helping spread the gospel to remote places and places that we don't even know the names of because we're not allowed to know the names of them. They're so hostile to the gospel that it has to be kind of a sneaky thing. So I would like to present your five-year award from Operation Christmas Child. Donna, if you'll come up. It's... And it says, for your love for the Lord Jesus Christ, through your service and compassion for others. Thank y'all so much, First Baptist Holly Springs, for being the hands and feet of Jesus. been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, Bailey, I want him to come up here and sing, especially this morning. I think you will love it.
Another one of those where he quit singing before I quit listening. I wasn't fin I finished that. How many of you have seen that television show American Idol? Raise your hands. You've seen American Idol. Bailey, you were on American Idol, correct? And you made it through the Hollywood, correct? You can say you knew him, right? I can say, hey, I used to know him. I'll remember him. He'll forget all about me. What's that someday? No, thank you so much for that. And, uh, Heaven is not a myth, and God's love is real. And it's real for you today and for your family. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you, Father God, for the truth, the reality of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, Father God, thank you for the fact that it's part of history. Uh, it is real, and, Father God, it is the rock upon which we stand today, the the salvation of Jesus is that which we stand upon today, Father, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. God, we pray that you'd bless us during these moments when we consider your word now. God, our hearts and our minds, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take your Bible and open it to 1 Peter chapter 1, the first chapter of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. Everything costs more these days. Have you noticed that? When you go to the grocery store, if you think you're going to need something, you better go ahead and get it because the next time you go, what? It's going to cost more <laughs> than when you were there before. Uh, and things from a generation ago, sometimes it's kind of funny to go back and look at how much things cost when, like, I was a child. Uh, when some of you were children, how much uh, less expensive things were. And, uh, and some things are of more value because of what they represent. Reader's Digest had a little story in it about a man who w went on a business trip to San, Francis San Francisco. excuse me. And once he got there, he was uh, in this business meeting, and he realized, I have forgotten my wife's birthday. 
he had said goodbye to his wife the day before, and he wondered why she gave him a funny look. And it dawned on him, I have forgotten my wife's birthday, so he left the business meeting. He went to a jewelry store, and there was a lady there, and he told uh, this lady that worked at the jewelry store what had happened. He said, I have forgotten my wife's birthday. I need a special gift for her. And this lady uh, thought for a moment, and she said, I don't think I have anything that expensive. <laughs> Today, I want us to look at the highest cost. What cost more than anything else in history? Your salvation and mine. God's forgiveness came at the highest cost. Now, First Peter was written by Simon Peter. Remember that outspoken disciple of Jesus? It's written about around A.D. 60. Uh, Peter was in Rome at the time of the writing. And Peter looked out across southern Europe and Asia Minor, and he saw Christians and churches that were hurting. He saw persecution. Uh, he saw Christians losing their jobs, losing their families, and just beginning that phase where some of them were going to lose their lives because of their faith. And he wrote this letter of hope and encouragement about how God can strengthen us through difficult times. One of the good things about difficult times is oftentimes it makes us see God more clearly. And it makes us focus on God and focus upon His presence in our lives. And he talks about the high cost of forgiveness, the highest cost imaginable. Look there in 1 Peter chapter 1 in verse 18, excuse me. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. And understand these truths about that, about that forgiveness. I pray that you have it. And if you've not experienced God's forgiveness, we celebrate it with two uh, youngsters who've accepted that forgiveness. If you've not accepted that today, I pray that before this service is over, you'll do just that. Understand that God's forgiveness is not perishable. Everything else in life that you have is perishable except for your salvation. <laughs> do you know that? That's hard for us to grasp because we are people, uh, we say, sometimes we say we're in the flesh and that's a bad thing. It usually is, isn't it? When my waders leak, when I'm trying to baptize somebody, I sometimes want to get in the flesh because my pants get wet. But that's okay. The bottom of my pants always get wet. But we're in the flesh today, which means we're human. We're here right now. And our reality around us is the things that we can touch and sense. And friends, I'm here to tell you today that every single thing that you can see and touch and comprehend through your natural senses, everything's going to perish. It has a shelf life. I'm going to come back to that. I want to explain that here in just a moment. But look in verse 16. Peter says in 1 Peter 1, 16, keep your Bible open because we're going back into Luke here in a moment, and then we're going to come back. 1 Peter 1, 16 says, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. He's quoting from Leviticus here where God told the people of Israel that they should be holy, that he was a holy God who just led them out of Egyptian captivity, and as he's holy, they're to be holy. Well, how do you become holy? How can we be holy? Well, first of all, by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. And then you begin that process, don't you? <laughs> how long does it take? It takes a lifetime. 
It's called The Pursuit of Holiness. The first, one of the first little books that I read when I first got saved was a little book called The Pursuit of Holiness. And it described how holiness is something that's always there in front of you, but it's to be pursued. God said, be holy as I'm holy. Several years ago, there was a commitment service it became popular for young people. And at the end of a sermon, after the end of a contemporary worship event, somebody would stand up at the front, they would light a big candle, and they would invite the youth who want to know Jesus as their Savior to come forward and to light a candle and stand off to the side. And each one of those young people was invited to come forward and to say, live for him. He died for me, and I'll live for him. And to make that life commitment. God's forgiveness is eternal. Uh, it, it does not perish. And it comes to those who ask Christ into their heart and their life and begin that pursuit of holiness. Uh, every single solitary possession that you have in your life today is going gonna, is gonna to perish. You know that, don't you? Everything. Look back in Luke chapter 12. Now keep your place in 1 Peter 1. Luke chapter 12. You'll have to open your Bible for this. This is not going to be on the screen. 1 Peter, or excuse me, Luke chapter 12. We're going back to 1 Peter 1. In Luke 12, I still hear pages. You have a phone and you have it on computer. It pulls up a lot quicker, doesn't it? Luke 12. In verse 15, then he, Jesus, said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? And then in verse 21, Jesus says, This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich toward God. Verse 20 of that passage says, This night your life will be demanded from you. It will be taken away from you in the Greek. It will be taken from you. Did you know there is that the Bible says, For as it is appointed unto men, wants to die but after this the judgment that means you know you we have an appointment <laughs> it's bad to think about it's kind of tough to think about sometimes but you ever stop and think you know i have an appointment somewhere at some point in time god's going to call me home unless he comes before that time and you know i'm like i've told you all before i want to do that rapture thing you know i want i want i want to do that rapture thing but whether I get to or not, I'm going to be with the Lord. And I know that to be the case. I love that verse 15. Life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Jesus also said in Matthew 6, 19, Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal and we say amen to that <laughs> but how much time do we give every week to our possessions and how much time do we give to the lord it's minuscule isn't it if your life is like mine all our possessions are going to perish someday. On August the 13th, 
College Hill Presbyterian Church in Oxford, the old historic sanctuary burned to the ground. I had been in that church <laughs> way back when I was in college. Uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it was old back then, over 100 years old. How many of you ever been in that church? It's one of the oldest churches uh, in this part of the country, in the state of Mississippi, really one of the oldest churches. And it burned to the ground. But I really loved what those Presbyterian folks in Oxford did. You know what they did the next Sunday morning? That was on Saturday night. Guess what they did Sunday morning? They met in the fellowship hall. It didn't burn. And I like one of the guy's testimonies. He said, man, it smells like smoke in here, but we're worshiping the Lord. <laughs> he said, literally, the sanctuary is still smoldering, but we're in the fellowship hall. It's fine. It survived the fire. We've got electricity. We've got utilities, and we're worshiping the Lord. And some people say, did you hear the church burned up? No, it didn't. The church is still meeting, right? The building that the church meets in. And someone says, what about all those memories? Memories are perishable. If your memory revolves around uh, a possession, did you know your health is perishable? <laughs> if you're over 60, can I get an amen in the house of the Lord, okay? Becomes more and more of a reality. Doesn't it? But watch this. Age doesn't have anything to do with it, does it? Friday night, a week ago, my wife and my daughter probably know what I'm about to tell you. It was August the 19th. There was a home football game in Greenfield, Tennessee. And one of our friends has a, a close friend of our family's, uh, has a son that's a teenager that plays for the Greenfield High School Yellow Jackets. And he was a little injured. He was injured, so he wasn't going to play that night. So he was standing there on the sidelines watching the game. He's 17, 17 years old, 17 years old. There were screams because somebody looked over, and that young man was laying on the ground. He's not in the game now. He's standing on the sidelines. <laughs> he's healthy. He's an athlete. He's 17 years old. His heart stopped beating and praise the Lord at those football games that are always paramedics <laughs> God answered a lot of prayer that night the whole everybody in the both sides of the uh, stadium the bleachers there they were all praying and for several minutes that young man had no heartbeat they airlifted him to Vanderbilt Hospital in Nashville and the, the last we'd heard, they still hadn't had a diagnosis. What? What? He's 17 years old. He's an athlete. He's not in the game. He's standing there watching the game, and he collapses. And they sent him on with a defibrillator saying, we've got to do some more testing, but this, we need to send this with you in case this happens again. It's unexplained. And things like that happen, and I was so glad. I think he was at the ball game Friday night. <laughs> One week later, he's standing back on the sidelines again. Praise be to the Lord. It was miraculous. But it reminds us that our health is not guaranteed. It's perishable. Our possessions, everything we can touch, our cars, our homes. People say, but yeah, but look at these homes here in Holly Springs. Some of them are... You know, 175 years old. Have you seen some of them lately? You know, maybe there's some of those people that, that generation that grew up in those homes, some of those folks are passing away, and there's newer generations now, and they're saying, you know what, we're just not as concerned about this. And the homes, unless they're cared for, what happens to them? They deteriorate. They're not, they're not permanent. They're perishable. Every single thing in your life other than your relationship with God has a time limit on it. Did you know that relationships are perishable? I've heard people say the worst pain I've ever gone through in my life was a divorce. 
I made a commitment for a lifetime. We made a commitment. Whatever happened, happened. And that which we thought was not going to perish during this lifetime, it did. Only our relationship with God is not perishable. And God's forgiveness gives meaning to our lives. Let me tell you, folks, a life without Jesus is a life that's empty of any real meaning. Now, you're back over in 1 Peter 1. In 1 Peter chapter 1, in verse 18, again, Peter says, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you. What was he referring to here? Some scholars say he was referring to uh, in Egypt. You know, when you are a slave, your life is kind of empty, isn't it? And, and, and maybe he was referring to that. Some scholars say, no, what he was referring to here, he was referring to the empty worship that was going on at the time. Remember when Jesus came and, and the Jews were saying, the Pharisees and the religious leaders were saying, all you have to do is you bring a sacrifice and you pay your, uh, your temple tax and do all those things. And people were going through those rituals and they weren't finding any meaning for their life. And it was kind of an empty way of life. Some people approach church like that. They never really experience true joy and, and meaning in life because they never really give their heart and their life uh, to Jesus Christ. Uh, they come to church, but being a part of church is, is not enough. You need to know Christ as your Savior. And for the Gentiles, everything about their life was empty. For the Gentiles, for the non-Jews, uh, they were worshiping all these pagan gods and all this pantheon of gods, uh, first the Greek gods and then the Roman gods, and doing all these things, and it was empty and meaningless. That's the best way, by the way, to always witness to a young person. It's really hard to tell a young person you're going to die someday because they think what? No, I ain't. <laughs> That's for old folks. But to ask a young person, tell me what kind of joy and meaning you have in your life. Tell me about what you're, I want to tell you about what you're missing. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Do you have that life that gives meaning uh, to a meaningless life? Uh, that word that is translated as empty there in verse 18 means worthless or useless or futile it's a futile way of living god's forgiveness gives meaning to life do we have a picture here let's see do we have a picture of bill uh, brunel now, that's a handsome dude there isn't that i mean i mean then that's a ladies there's a dream come true for you right there right this guy was one of my favorite people around when I first heard about him a few years ago at the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, Liam Bill Brunel was a former bodybuilder and a professional wrestler. And that's a stretch to believe that guy was a wrestler, right? Who would have thunk it? Who would have thought? He was a professional uh, wrestler and a bodybuilder. And he got in a lot of trouble and he went to the penitentiary and spent time in prison. And then <laughs> Jesus came into his life. And he was gloriously saved. And down through the years, he grew in his relationship with the Lord. And the North American Mission Board, he was a church planter and a church mission strategist in Northern California. Now, let me tell you what, folks. If you're going to send somebody to California to start a church, back in 2019 in November, God called Bill home. He was just 59. But his testimony was this. He said, Southern Baptists, send me out as a warrior to participate in the battle for souls. He had been fighting his whole life, and he said, now... 
Southern Baptists are sending me out to fight the good fight. And thanks to him, a lot of people in California came to know the Lord and churches were started and churches were ministered into because that which was empty and meaningless came to have great, great meaning. Let me close with this point. God's forgiveness comes with the highest cost. God's forgiveness comes with the very highest cost. How much does it cost for God to save you? How much does it cost for God to save you? And Peter said in 1 Peter 1, 19, it was with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, the perfect lamb of God. When John the Baptist saw Jesus approaching the Jordan River, and John was there baptizing, remember what John said, Behold the lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus would die on the cross. Do you ever really stop? And we say that, folks, and we say, that's nice. Isn't that a nice thought? Boy, that's, that really gets to you. You ever really thought about how God sent his son to die on the cross for you? Sometimes it's a little too much for my mind. <laughs> it overwhelms my heart to think that God loves me enough to send he sent his son to die on the cross for my sin. The highest cost. The highest cost. A little five-year-old boy. This happened to me when I was, when Kyle was a little boy. And naive. Now he's a big boy and naive. But anyway, nonetheless, he's my, now he's about 6'3". But when my firstborn was, I don't know how old he was. We went one afternoon to the Hickory Ridge Mall. How many of you remember the Hickory Ridge Mall, okay? Uh, you bunch of old folks in here. But anyway, we went up there, and I was going to buy my darling wife a coat for Christmas. And so we went in, and of course, you know how it is when you're a dude looking for something for your wife or whatever. I'm just at the mercy of whoever's waiting on me. But I found this coat, and I, I thought, well, that looked good on her. Anything looks good on her, but this looked great on her. And, uh, and I, got, I got in line. I said, Kyle, let me get in line. Christmas time, there was a long line. And so I was standing there in line, and I was looking at this coat, and I looked down. He's gone. I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> and I didn't want to put the coat down because I was afraid it was on sale. I was afraid something place was packed full of people. I don't even remember the store it was. The Limited, or is that the name of a store? The Limited, was that a store? Is that a store now? I can't remember what name. You know, if it's not, if it wasn't Sears and Roebuck, I didn't know what it was growing up. But I looked, I, I looked down and he was gone, man. I threw the coat aside, hung it up, whatever, and went running out in the mall. I couldn't see him. And I started running down the mall, and there was a security guard. And there was my son standing there with his hands in his pockets, and he was crying his eyes out. And so was his daddy. And I wanted to whoop him. <laughs> Yeah, that's what. Man, I didn't. I took him in my arms and hugged him. And he looked at me and he saw how heartbroken I was. And I looked at him and I saw how heartbroken he was. And I went to him. And God looked down at me one day and he saw what sin had done to my life. And it broke the heart of God. So he came to me in the form of his son. His son died on the cross so that where I was lost, I could be what? Found. <laughs> and I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. Let's stand together and we'll pray. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you, Father, for this.
gathering of people. And Lord, I pray for the one who is here, the ones who are here, the one who is watching by Facebook or the one ones that are watching by Facebook or maybe someone later on YouTube, Father, whatever the case might be. Somebody is heartbroken because of a meaningless, empty life. God, may you reach down to them with that unperishable love and grace. May they experience it this day, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're going to give you an invitation to come to God this morning. We're going to sing a song. We're, as we're singing this song, you can make your way down to the front of this church. And it's my joy and my privilege the church instills in me to help you know Jesus right now and then come to know him better. If you're watching on Facebook, we are here to help you know Jesus and know him better. Right where you are, you can pray and ask Christ to come into your heart and your life, and he'll do just that. We're going to sing an invitation to him. Larry? There is a fountain. If Jesus is speaking to your heart this morning, this is your invitation. Say yes to him as we sing. This morning joining with us thank you if you're on facebook and you've worshiped with us or you're watching this a little later on youtube uh, we welcome you and invite you if you're local we want you to come and worship with us if you have that opportunity if not uh, we're delighted co to continue this ministry to you thank you for coming guests i'm going to ask you if you would would you be seated for just a moment we have one quick moment okay guys uh, if you'll raise your hand one per family if we can give out our nominating committee reports real quickly. Um, somebody want to run upstairs and uh, Milton, do you want to grab some and head over on the other side? Uh, Eli, if you'll give Milton some. If we can do one of these per family, I don't think I have anywhere near enough of it for everybody to have one. They're multiple pages long. And so uh, we want to we can get you a copy. If you do not get a copy this morning, we can get you a copy. A guest, if you will, just bear with us here just a moment. Let me say this. If you are with us on Facebook, God bless you. Have a great week. If you're still with us, I don't know if they're still with us. If you, if you are, we're going to go ahead and dismiss you now while our church has a business meeting. God bless you. Have a great week.